Welcome back to Threads, the uh, pilot episode of our new show here on LTC. Hopefully you enjoyed our segment on neighborhoods as we've been going through and addressing the city's new draft master plan uh, and the public meetings the city's been hosting around them. Um, rejoined by our guests, Corey Shuto of the Downtown Lowell and Anne-Marie Page of Centerville. And uh, so, folks, welcome back and thank you so much for your talk. We're going to be focusing next on the environment and sustainability, which is a key portion of the master plan. In fact, sustainability uh, made it into the title of the new draft master plan. So, Corey, I think you've got some really interesting thoughts on how the environment and sustainability fits into Lowell today and our vision as we move towards 2025. Can you uh, speak to that? Well, uh, as you mentioned, um, people of my age group often, we grew up well after a lot of the environmental movement got going. It's, it's something we think about fairly often, you know, should we be recycling this? How can we be reducing carbon footprints? How can we be using less gas? And uh, one of the things the, that Adam Bakey mentioned very early on in, the, um, in his talk before the, uh, we began the individual breakout sessions is that probably the most environmentally responsible people in the United States are those that live in New York City hmm. because they use the least resources um, because they use the least amount of space, they have to drive the least. Uh, the great urban philosopher Jane Jacobs once said that the, um, Americans need to understand that the city is a natural way for humans to live, and, and as such, it is part of the environment, and, and it is an environmental entity in and of itself. And it's better to have people living near each other and having the ability to go out of the city and visit the farms and visit the woods than it is to have everybody out on their own little plot of land that they're not necessarily working, but, oh, this is my half acre of woods, which is too small to be a habitat for anything, but it's mine and this is, the, this is nature. I, part of my interest in places like Lowell is, is I don't buy into that. I would much rather live in, in a dense urban environment and have my local parks and have, you know, try to produce some food locally if at all possible and be able to go out and get away from these population centers instead of seeing a sprawl that just reaches forever. And I think one of the other important topics that we had, uh, we had mentioned off, off cameras and it came up as well is that sustainability, the way we're talking about it, we're not talking about whether or not we're going to run into problems with running out of oil or running out of this resource or this, that, or the other thing. Sustainability means economic sustainability as well. It's sustainability for the city to be able to continue forward growing and, and changing and, and staying relevant, so. Right, well, and I, and I think, uh, as we, you mentioned, we talked about off camera, a big concern I have, and this comes from my business background, you know, where mm -hmm. I am a sort of a transparency and efficiency expert and making mm -hmm. sure that things work well and they have to be sustainable. And, and so, Anne-Marie, I definitely would like to hear your thoughts on, you know, you've been in Lowell all your life. You've seen the city government, you know, evolve, grow, adapt, change, whatever it's done. And obviously, you remember the times before the National Park, before we had a massive influx of, of right. federal dollars. And I'm wondering, you know, I think that's an important part to speak about sustainability, both from how it affects the environment, because clearly the Park Service is trying to preserve mm -hmm. the character of the city as it is. And we've got a number of, you know, parks and green spaces and waterways across the city of Lowell. Well, but how has that changed in your lifetime? You know, I'm glad somebody stepped up and started to preserve some of our history because we lost a lot of good looking buildings before. But when I was listening to Corey talk about recycling, like they'll say, oh, now we have to recycle. We have to do this. <laughs> you know, we recycled World War II, right? I mean, I'm old, but I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to know I can remember as a child. You took the paper off the tin can, you washed it out, and you'd crush it. And everything went out, rubber, paper, the tin can, mm. right? And you did, re you recycled for the war. That's what it was. Right. And you would recycle. So then they just stopped it. I don't know why, maybe they didn't need any more, whatever it was. And then somebody realized, gee, we're wasting a lot of stuff here. And they started mm. it up. Well, of course, we, we went from, uh, you know, World War II and right. the, the sort of post-World War II industrial re-revolution re right. in, in, mm. in manufacturing, mm. we started moving towards high tech. And you don't need rubber, for the most part, or <laughs> tin cans to make computer chips, right. as we started doing. So we, we saw a change there, and so maybe there was no market for it. 
But we talked about off camera, you know, the meaning to you, to someone of your generation, of what environment and sustainability means. Right. And say, well, what does it mean in, in Centerville? And what does it mean to Anne Marie Page and people of your generation versus someone of Corey's generation who's, you know, well, a few I, years younger anyway? I think <laughs> what we want to see, which we're glad we have a historical society, we want to see some of it saved. Like we had down, now it's the lot overpass. But on Middlesex Street, we had a depot with the trains pulling. Now, the trains still run those tracks, but it's all changed because of the lot overpass. But that building was beautiful. And the woodwork inside was magnificent. Now, that's and all National Grid now, right? That section oh, through there? It's all whatever. Yeah. It's the underneath streets, the ramps. Roads, yeah. thunder, <laughs> it's, no, it's gone. The building's yeah. down. But it was beautiful. And then right over here, right at Dutton and Merrimack, there was a YMCA. Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful building. And these were buildings with characters. And then somebody finally said, whoa, put the brakes on here. We're tearing down too many good looking buildings. Right? Mm. And they had the historic preservation. And now they're realizing, what can we do with it? Let's see what we can do with it. And we're lucky, instead of them tearing down the buildings, we have lofts, we have condos. You're living here, you're very happy. And we are like what we'd say, a, a mini Boston, an affordable Boston, really. Well, now what about, so you touched on a, an important topic, Corey, sort of balancing the mm -hmm. need for urban density and sort of, you know, the New York model, go vertical, yes. everything dense. Yes. You don't go very far, right? You, and I visited people in New York City. Yeah, it's great. You walk down stairs and you, you can turn left or right and you've got mm -hmm. half a dozen markets so you can get all your needs met yep. within a two block walk and everyone just carries their little bags and you go back. And that's great, but you know, you also like a bit of, you know, hey, grow your own food, maybe mm -hmm. have some of this other stuff around. And I happen to be a part-time farmer, so I have a passion about that. I yes. farm across the river and drink it with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But how do you balance tearing down historical buildings and preserving them? If a historical building, and you on the Historical Society, uh, Corey, you know, worrying about the character of the city versus, well, is it is it an, an, an uh, energy efficient building, right? And we, yes. we have the, you know, the UTEC building on Heard Street, that recently became the oldest LEED Platinum certified building in the country. And that building is, is quite old. I, I don't know if you know the exact age, yeah, either of you. 1820s, 1830s. Right. And it's a beautiful building. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the amount of work that UTEC put in, thankfully it worked with their program. But you know, mm. how do you balance those needs? Where do you say, well, here's this big old drafty brick building, and mm -hmm. here's what it's going to cost to heat these 14-foot ceilings, versus, well, we, you know, we could knock it down and put up some super energy efficient green buildings. Mm -hmm. How do, we, how do we speak to that balance and preserve character and yet modernize and well, be able to support people like Corey who need right. a fast internet connection mm -hmm. at home? Right, <laughs> well you need the internet connection. I found that out when mine wasn't happy for two days. <laughs> but you know, it's, you have to, just like you're speaking of the environment, we have to protect the environment for our children and grandchildren. We have to protect some of this history. I'm all for saving energy and I did, I mean two years ago, was it not more than two years ago, I retired, right? So here we are at home, my husband mm -hmm. and I at home. The first went to the two of us at home, and I've got the heat, you know, like 72. I like my house at Hawaii temperature, right? Mm -hmm. Well, mother of heaven, I think I bought half of the Mideast, for heaven's sakes, to heat the house, mm -hmm. right? I didn't pay that much for my house when I bought it, I think. So I said, oh, we have to make some changes. And we did. We hooked up with an energy group, and we were able to do more insulation, do ways to save energy. I put up some more French doors. I put in a little, a small little gas furnace, um, fireplace, like a mini mm -hmm. fireplace. Wonderful, my son-in-law is a contractor, came over, built this beautiful little mantle. It's adorable, fits right in with the theme of the house. But I have saved not only a ton of money, I have also saved some energy. So there are ways to do it. You have to look into it and check it out, but it's good. I probably didn't get motivated till I saw my money flying out the window, right? And then I saw like, oh, this isn't working, right? But it's good. You're saving energy, right? Right. And yet I have not destroyed, I have a 10 room Victorian. So I haven't destroyed the character of my house. Right. So it can it's, be it done. It can be done. It can and be done. And I think done. the city has, has done a good job at stepping up in a right. leadership role and you right. know, engaging with Amoresco. And they've, they've put right. in their contract to they save have. the city millions of dollars. Right. And it's basically going to pay for all the enhancement the city put in and then mm. keep repaying right. beyond that. 
and a lot of us can look to that, right? I'm looking at possible options for, you know, some, you know, whether I can put in some, some solar or geothermal where I live in the mm. Anchor. I'm not, geothermal might be a little bit tough given my postage stamp of a, of a yard. <laughs> but, you know, to work out, out options like that, and I think, you know, the city in the master plan, which hopefully, you know, you can go online, go up to lowellma.gov and look at the planning department. It's currently featured on the city's homepage, but it's not hard to find. Look at the draft plan. They speak right. a lot about sustainability in the environment. So the city's taking the lead. They certainly are. From an individual, you, you own a condo, so I you do. have limited improvements you can make probably because you're not the only unit in the building. Exactly. So I mean. how does the city help you be more green and sustainable, and how does that really help the city? I mean, at the end of the day, do they care how much, you know, Corey Shudo pays for heating his condo? Well, not, not directly, no, but I mean, I, I can definitely speak to the downtown Lowell is, a, you know, the, this came up at the visioning session, one of the most um, lowest energy uses historic downtown cores in the nation because of the amount of local, state, federal money that we've been able to put into it. And as, as a board member of the Historical Society, I had definitely, you know, to your point, we have to preserve Lowell's character if we want people to live here. People move to places because character, but this is not a museum. This is a, this is a living city. If something has to change about a building to be able to allow the building to be economical, it has to happen. And in the building, I'm in an old mill building, you know, brick walls this thick, that type of thing. We just got a, a, a good amount of money. We had a boiler that was 30 years old. Um, our natural gas bill to heat that thing was six figures. We, um, we were just able to get a grant to install far more energy efficient boilers. I forget the statistics on exactly how quickly it's going to pay for itself, but you know, we're, we're looking at, at, at that type of, type of option. Energy retrofits have to happen. You know, there, there's private interest in, you know, everybody likes saving money. And if there, if there are grants to make this possible or if it can be done entirely with private money, it, it, it should happen, and, you know. Well, I think for, Everyone, right? right? As Anne-Marie pointed out, it is not hard to show them on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. here's what you're paying now, That's it. here's yes. the investment you make, here's right. your savings, and, and, and here's how it right. adds up, you know, here's your new bottom line. And right. your eyes yes. can go, wow, that's great. Now you think of, you know, uh, the great gifts you can buy your husband the mm -hmm. next Christmas, as you, you know, so in case, <laughs> you, didn't, in case you didn't get him every, oh, that's true, <laughs> that's true. Well, you know, those are the things that we can think about, but I think another angle, we touched on this earlier, what about the city's viability from, you know, one of the concerns we have. The city has talked a lot in this plan about, you know, our great culture, our history, about mm -hmm. environment and sustainability, and I think they've got some things that are in conflict with each other in the plan, but everything in the plan, as we talked about, a lot of people have said this, the plan is such a high-level document, it's designed mm -hmm. to not offend or annoy anyone, right. there's really nothing you can find to disagree with in the plan, no. it's very no. vague, right. Yes, and, and, and that's part of the intention. Right. And like you said, like we were talking neighborhoods and yes, talking history, Lowell, Lowell is a good city. Lowell has good people, right? Every now and then somebody goofs off and of course it jumps into the newspaper or whatever saying, you know, John Smith, I mean, I don't know John Smith, I'm just <laughs> taking a name out of a hat, you know, uh, you know, Larry Moe and Curley did this and you know, it's all over. Lowell is a good city, good schools, good people, diversified, it's got everything you want. It really does. And we have a good government. That plan and development department has a fabulous team. They will work with anyone, contractors, somebody coming in with the, wants to start up a business. They'll work with you. They'll direct you to people that can assist you and to guide you. We have uh, numerous small businesses in Lowell and successful small businesses. We do. We do have a problem in the city of Lowell, though. I want to speak on this, on the economic sustainability of the city. Mm. We have a dwindling percentage of private sector employment and a growing um, increased uh, percentage of nonprofits and government sector. Right. And so, you know, one pays for the other, and obviously mm -hmm. there's a mutual benefit, but at right. the end of the day, if you can't pay for it, you're going to have no. a problem. And, and since we've had the Park Service come in, and other things, there's been a massive influx of what I'll just generally call other people's money. Right. We can't be sustainable and depend on that forever, as we just no. saw with the fiscal cliff talks in D.C. Right. It, it doesn't take a lot to, to threaten that supply of dollars. Right. We know things happened in the city. There were departments that were in a panic because, oh my goodness, what's happening in Congress? Thinking of that and thinking about the environment, thinking about the balance of open space mm -hmm. and agriculture and, and urban dwelling and the plan, what can you speak to? We've got a few minutes left to kind of talk about environment and sustainability. 
Is there anything in the master plan that you'd like to highlight in a good way, a bad way, or just speak to for a couple minutes? Well, I, I think one of the uh, one of the points that was raised, and again, you know, I am a private sector employee. I have to go all the way down to Waltham for work every day. That's 35 miles, so at least a gallon and a half of gas I'm using every day and an hour and change out of my life to go down to another city to go to a private business that they are getting the tax money for. In Lowell, um, the statistics I've seen, I've heard they're no longer quite so bad, has 106,000 people at night and about 60,000 people during the day. We have that much of a net wow. out outflux of people who are working in other places. And part of that is, you know, the, the, the model for, you need a lot of space to put in a major employer in the service sector like a Walmart. You're just not gonna tear down a huge chunk of Lowell to put something like that in. But one thing that was brought up at, at the sessions is we need to stop necessarily going after only these very large employers because they can be difficult to attract, but for the most part, they wanna move to places that have very interesting entrepreneurial small businesses already in place. Right. And I, I think the city gets that, and I think we are seeing more of that type of, type of employment coming in. So, so uh, just in a minute or so, Anne Marie, we've got to wrap up. But what are your thoughts on that? You've seen again the city evolve in the time that you've been living here, which is your whole life. How is that going forward well, going to play I, out? So I we can do. keep paying for the government, the right. great government that with this great planning department. We can't depend on the government to pay the bill all the time. But I think, uh, like I said, I think this planning and development department that we have in Lowell is a gem. Exceptional. And they we work agree. as a team. We have some very smart people here. And like you said, maybe you can't bring in the big guy, but you can maybe bring in the middle guy. I love to see people work. My husband works two jobs. I think every man should work two jobs. Good for him. Keeps <laughs> him young and spry. But when somebody says, oh, I'm working or, or I'm busy, I have to, I say, that's wonderful. I'm so happy you're working, right? Mm -hmm. I remember my son, his first job was at UPS driving the big brown truck. And he came home one night and he said, well, it was a Friday night, I'm tired. You're tired. Your father worked two jobs, has worked 21 days straight without a day off. Don't tell me you're tired, boy, <laughs> right? But I mean, it's just, you want to see businesses, like you said, if you can't get the real big guy, then maybe plan B is the middle guy. You create an ecosystem right. for bigger businesses to come in. Suppliers, right. mm -hmm. creative, interesting That's people. It. Well, across the country, as we, you know, we're kind of winding up here, it's important to remember that, you know, roughly two thirds of all the jobs created every year in America are created by small and mid sized businesses, mm. from the mom and pop stores mm -hmm. to whatever it might be. So we definitely want to see more of that in Lowell. Right. We want a sustainable Lowell. We want a green and, and eco friendly Lowell, mm -hmm. but we also want to be sustainable for young folks like yourself young couples yeah. and businesses. So uh, we hope you've enjoyed our talk on neighborhoods uh, and sorry, the environment and sustainability. We've done neighborhoods. And what we'll be talking about after the break is we'll be talking about economics and mobility within the city, which is a really important topic. And Corey is very passionate about that, as am I. And Anne-Marie, I'm sure you've got strong opinions on it too. So thanks a lot, and we'll join you in a couple minutes.